Hello, uh, here's Alex from BC Designer. And in this video, I'd like to discuss uh, one uh, popular question about the normalization of the KPIs, of the metrics. Uh, what is a normalization? Uh, normalization is a way to, as you might guess, to normalize metrics, to normalize indicators. What does it mean? Uh, here I have an example. I have several uh, popular metrics like lifetime value, net promoter score, uh, social media activity metric, uh, number of training, uh, number of participants per training, these metrics. And um, as you can see, all of them have their own measure units. So we measure uh, lifetime in dollars, we measure net promoter score, uh, the percent of people who would recommend this product to uh, to France, we measure it in percent. Uh, social media activity, we measure it in a, we can measure it in different ways, but in this example, I suggest to measure it posts that we do per month. And uh, we also have response time, probably if we're thinking about customer support, uh, how fast you respond to emails that you have from uh, your customers, we measure it in hours. And we have number of training participants that we measure actually in the number of these participants. So um, what's the problem with these metrics? No problem for now. But if we want to compare them one to another, uh, we won't be able to do this for one simple reason, because they are measured in a different, in different way. Uh, they have different measure units. So imagine that you need to uh, compare, let's say, social media activity to uh, the uh, uh, number of training of, of the participants of the training. You cannot do this because this is measured in posts per month and this is measured in, uh, in the number of people. So you cannot do this, at least directly. And um, what can we do to actually measure uh, these metrics? I mean, to make them comparable we have to normalize them. And um, uh, during this video, I'm going to show you how to do this. And I will be using uh, mostly this tool, the uh, Google uh, Spreadsheets. And I will also be using sometimes the C Designer online uh, because in some cases it it's makes my job much more easier. But let's start with Google Spreadsheets. So what's, uh, what stands behind the normalization. Uh, in simple words, we need to convert all these values into the percent, uh, into the percent values. And how to do this? Uh, we need to put these values on certain scale in order to convert them into the, uh, into the percent. And then we need to define the way that we will uh, calculate the performance of this metrics on this scale. So let's do this. I have here two columns, min and max, that will actually be my scale. So here I have uh, this lifetime value, and here I need to put some reasonable minimal value. Probably it will be zero in this case. What about maximal value? Uh, it depends. Uh, if we have some historical data, if we have some data for benchmarking, Probably we can put here something, yeah. So let's put here 300, just for example. Net promoter score, it's easier. So probably we, uh, this value, the NP, NPS value can uh, vary from zero to 100%. Uh, social media activity, again, it depends on your business. If it's a small business that has just one social media page and you post it, uh, few posts per month, per week, but if it's a larger company, it can be something more uh, tangible. So let's put here 25, just for example. Uh, with response time, uh, we can respond very fast, probably with zero, it's not realistic, but anyway, let's put it. And you might guess that if it's uh, some holidays and your team is not available, so you might respond longer. And finally, the number of participants of the training, uh, you can estimate it by, uh, let's say, from, again, zero 
to uh, 35 participants probably don't have more people who will be involved in this training. So now we have defined the scale. And the next step is to uh, define the way that this value will match this scale. So how can we do this? Uh, basically, we need to define a mathematical function here for what we call performance. Yeah. And performance is normally measured in percent. Okay, so how to define the mathematical function in this case? Well, I don't want to make any mistakes, so I will go to BC Designer and I will just copy the formula from here. Optimization, they have a formula here. So let me copy it and reuse here. So how it looks like. Uh, I need to take value, which in my case is this cell, D2, uh, minus, I need to pick this, F2, the minimal value, then I have this D2, which is the maximum value, and I have here again, I have F2. Okay. Yeah, and this uh, this should be in percent. Yeah, I have it in percent. And we can just simply copy this formula to other, uh, other metric except this one. I will be talking about this later. Uh, so what we have just achieved. Before, all the metrics were measured in their own uh, measure units. Yeah. And now all of them are measured in percent. So now all of them are comparable. How it works? Uh, well, actually I can change this value and you will see how the performance will be changing. So if I change it to 300, the performance will be 100%. If I decrease it to zero, the performance is zero. In, and if I increase slowly, you see that the performance is increasing as well. The same happens with uh, other metrics. If we achieve a 25 maximum value, then we have 100% performance here. Okay, so that's good. Uh, if it looks like something uh, complicated, we can do the same in the software. Well, in the software, it's much easier. Uh, so let's just copy this data. For example, here we have LTV 250, which is our current value. Uh, the baseline is zero and the maximum is 300. So actually, the software calculated for me the same figure, but in the case of using software, I don't need to, to remember all these formulas. Net promoter score, uh, current value 85. Target 100, I have it. Uh, social activity 12 and 25. Okay, I have it at 48%, the same as I have here. Then number of training per participants 28 with 35 target. Okay, so software uh, did the same job that we did here, but it did it a little bit faster. Uh, what's the problem with the response time? Uh, let me illustrate this for you. If I just copy the formula that I had there, you will see one interesting thing. I increase the response time up to uh, 48 hours and the performance is 100%. Obviously, that's not what, what the performance should be. Uh, if I decrease to two hours, the performance is that low, 4%, 4%. It's not what we want this performance to be. Uh, the response time is an example of the indicator when the uh, decrease of the value should result into the increase of the performance. So the faster we respond, the higher is the performance. Uh, this formula won't work for us in this case. So what's the formula? Well, again, I don't remember the formula, but I will just copy it uh, from, from the software. I have it here. Uh, in the case of the software, I don't need to remember this, so just pick another uh, option here, minimize value. And again, just a quick hack to avoid remembering some formulas. 
So here I have maximum value, which is my case is uh, D5 minus uh, D5, the current value. And here I have uh, maximum value D5 minus minimum value F5. If I'm not mistaken, then we have a very good performance formula now. So let's let's check it. So we increase the response time up to 40 hours and our performance decreases. And we increase it to one hour and our performance decreases. That's good. So again, in software it's a little bit easier. Just up here these numbers and that's it. So let's double check. The performance figures change here. So that's it. Uh, that's how the normalization works in uh, in uh, the uh, Google Spreadsheet software. And that's how we converted all these uh, metrics that we are we're not able to compare because of their measure units. Let's put here measure unit. And now we can actually compare them. Now we can actually say that, uh, for example, uh, with uh, uh, 80, 97% of response time performance and 48% of social media activity, we were able to achieve 85% uh, net promoter score. Yeah. So in, in, in this case, uh, now this statement make uh, much more sense. Yeah, and actually we can do some interesting calculation from this. We can calculate uh, average. I think we'll be talking about this in a different video. Average for these uh, metrics and uh, we can uh, group them. And actually we also can calculate uh, these metrics uh, using different weights for the indicator, because I guess uh, depend, depending on your business. Uh, for example, in our business, social media activity is less important. So in the calculation of scorecard, it should be taken with less weight than, for example, the response time. Again, in the software, it's a little bit easier because uh, we can just do it in this way. We can create customer metrics, for example, and just I can drop there, for example, response time and social media activity. And uh, well, the software yeah, just calculates from this figure. And if I want to play with the weight, I can do this here. Yeah. So um, finally, in the end, I wanted to give you some reference links. Uh, first of all, if you're interested in uh, learning more about uh, the way the software calculate all these figures, all these data, and well, not just software, but any any scorecarding tool. Uh, we have this article, which is called Scorecard 101, that gives a very detailed explanation uh, about how all this is calculated. Um, and another link that I will give, I will give it in uh, in the reference for this video, is actually that you can download uh, the desktop version of BC Designer to trial this on your computer, or you can down, uh, sign up with the online version of this tool to try it on your computer. Or, uh, and probably that's a good option to get started with, uh, you can download this tool, which is called BC Designer Lite, which is a freeware, freeware version of BC Designer that gives you a perfect opportunity to play uh, with these KPIs and uh, it's freeware tool, so you can enjoy it, enjoy it anytime, and uh, uh, no need to buy anything. Just uh, give it a try, and you will see that in many cases it will uh, make your life easier uh, when you deal with KPIs, and especially when you need to normalize many KPIs. Okay, I think that's enough for this video. Uh, I will. I hope to share more details. Uh, more detail in other videos. Thank you for your attention.